Beeswax has long been used in West African art techniques. Beautiful bronze sculptures were created using the lost wax metal casting technique in which an image is first formed in wax. Then the figure is enveloped in clay and the clay fired to melt the figure to create a mold into which molten metal is then poured. Batik fabric is created by painting or stamping cloth with melted wax and then dyeing it. After dyeing the cloth, the wax is removed by ironing or with hot water rinses, leaving the images where the wax had been the color of the original cloth. I'm not sure if oil lamps were developed preferentially over candle making in Africa, but for whatever reason it does not seem to be generally well known in the rural areas where I have worked that beeswax can be used to make high quality candles. This, even though folks often spend a significant amount of their earnings in the many areas without electricity on paraffin candles. Making freestanding candles, especially if they are tapered or cylindrical, usually requires an expensive mold or hours of tedious dipping. This segment shows how PVC tubing and condoms can be used as an appropriate technology alternative to pricey latex mold. A latex mold that produces a single tapered candle can cost $60 Canadian. The combination is necessary because wax will leak out of cut PVC tubing and an unencased condom will inflate to form a huge candle which would have to be priced too high for local markets to support. This exercise naturally leads to discussion of family planning and AIDS prevention. Representatives from public health units involved in AIDS education programs in Guinea expressed interest in using the activity as an ice-breaking exercise to reduce inhibitions around such discussions and the handling of condoms. You can Google condom candles to find complete instructions. One of the FAPI technicians, Abdurrahman Diallo, came up with another great idea for making high-quality candles using the petioles from papaya leaves which are readily available in most of Guinea. Whereas the petioles can be easily split to remove candles in contrast to the BBC tubing, no additional liner is needed to prevent leaking. Guinean beekeepers seemed enthusiastic and even surprised about the results of this simple demonstration. Hot and drying winds and working in soil can deplete protective skin oils. There is much potential in Guinea for the cottage industry production of moisturizing skin cream. These value-added products, made from local beeswax and shea butter, can significantly increase a subsistence farming family's income. To keep the oils and beeswax mixed with the water in the moisturizer requires an emulsifier. We were using borax that I had brought from Canada. We also added lemongrass oil to impart a pleasant fragrance. Because borax was difficult to find in Guinea, as an alternative we experimented with using egg yolk, with some encouraging results. However, Ghanaian cosmetic manufacturers with whom we subsequently networked indicated that the addition of water to any shea butter mixture can result in the product becoming rancid very quickly. It may prove more useful to explore options for mixtures incorporating only beeswax, shea butter, and other tropical oils. As you can see, demonstrations of the production of moisturizing cream were so popular, participants queued up to take samples home to the rest of the family. Here in Basura, even a youngster seems to enjoy sampling the fresh pomade. The folks in the village of Guba were so enthused about the stuff that the senior wife of a village elder gave her husband an impromptu massage with the skin treatment. Another value-added product that can be worked up from beeswax and honey is soap. Engaged in such an undertaking are the rural development staff of FAPI, from left to right, Rahilu Fatumatu Diallo, Abdurrahman Diallo, Abdul Gad Gadri Diallo, Tanu Diallo, Alpha Womar Diallo, Bare Haruna, and Mamadou Wariso. <laughs> Here, Tanu Diallo and Abdul Rahman Diallo, along with local soap maker Asiatu Jing of Guba, demonstrate how beeswax and honey produced in the community of Horekola can be cooked up with other materials to form the cosmetic cleansing agent. Care must be taken in this process as it includes the use of caustic soda or lye, which can cause serious chemical burns. Aside from Pular or another local language, most schooled people in Guinea also spoke French, belying the colonial episode of the country's history. However, some folks such as Asiatu Jing had also learned English to expand trade opportunities with nearby countries <laughs> such as Liberia and Ghana. Nice. We make soap in Faro Guba. We manage to make the soap. So oh. we make 75% and the lion. Excellent. Then we have the Noda, the Noda stamp. This is the lime, the lime soup, the red lime soup. So this, the, this stamp is a uh, guba, Isata guba. Nice. This stamp. So we have the hand, we hold the hand together, we hold our hands together. Shaking hand, shaking hand. We hold our hand together, so we hold ourselves to walk and be one. So that is the soup we make in guba. Excellent. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Oh, you missed it. 
You can use Google or the links in the description for this video to find recipes for soap and skin creams utilizing bee products.